Have you ever tried to fix your chronic tiredness and exhaustion from having more sleep only to have a long nap or go to bed really early, have 12 hours, have 10 hours and still wake up absolutely exhausted, feeling worse? Because if this is the loop that you're in, Hi guys, I'm Ren. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. This is where we level up and become the best, baddest versions of ourselves together. If that feels like a season that you are in, please join the gang. So let's get into it. This video is all about sleep and the fact that sleep and rest are different and the fact that you are absolutely exhausted, you don't know what to do, you feel so tired and you're trying to sleep you're trying to chill, you're trying to do all these things to relax your body and get some energy back, but sis, you just can't get it back. Let's start off with the fact that sleep and rest are not the same thing, which is something, you know, obviously the words are different, but it's something you don't really know. So to me, I feel like if I'm tired, I'm gonna go and sleep. I'm gonna go and try and get a nap in. I'm gonna go to bed early that night. I'm gonna try and have a lie in. You're just thinking about the fact that you need to go and catch up an extra sleep however i watched a ted talk by sandra dalton and it blew my mind about all these different things about sleep and rest and why you feel exhausted how to get over that so i'm here to break this down in a very simplified easy version action based and how we need to do it because you can't do nothing if you're tired you can't be productive you can't chase some dreams you can't create that dream life if you are knackered or what can you do girl Okay, so first of all, let's just get into the fact that there's seven, seven different types of rest. There's seven. So uh, we're there thinking, oh my God, like we're knackered, we need to replace knackeredness with sleep. But actually, nine times out of 10, your body actually probably needs a different type of rest. So I'm gonna go into each type of rest that your body craves for, what it craves for it, and how you can then deal with that craving and not feel knackered. First type of rest, mental rest. So this is when your brain has just had enough. You might need mental rest when let's say you're stuck in traffic. You're stuck in traffic and you know when you can't say, for me, driving is so exhausting, but that is because your brain is working so hard to look at all the different sensory things going on. Do you know what I mean? You're trying to drive, you're stopping, starting, you look at people crossing the road, you've got all these things going on. Your, thought, your feet are working, your hands are working, everything's just working. So your brain is just exhausted from the mental stress that driving the car and all the sensory, that's a big part of all the sensory components that are also going around when you are stuck in traffic or you're driving the car. Because like I said, there's so much to focus on. You might get to a destination, you're exhausted, you're thinking, oh my God, I just want to sleep. All you might need to do is sit in that car for 10 minutes and I've been doing it. I feel like I'm knackered and I literally will just sit in the car. Maybe not a car, maybe like a room if you can, because obviously there's still a lot of sensory going on. But depending if your parts are like a quote, Road, it might be okay but just sit in there for 10 minutes even if you want to put a start watch on your phone even if you haven't got 10 do five do three do whatever you can do but just stop do not check your phone this is not a instagram tiktok facebook check this is a mental rest check just sit there close your eyes if that feels comfortable to you i usually do close my eyes and just sit there oh my gosh i have been doing it and it is crazy, the rejuvenation I get. I will sit there for 10 to 15 minutes and I cannot believe that I feel like I've had a whole nap. I literally feel like I've been sleeping for 30 to 40 minutes, which is crazy. Like I actually feel so rejuvenated by just giving my brain a second to switch off. So that is one of the main ways that you can combat mental rest. Another way is, especially if it's like mental rest, obviously overthinking is a lot of like mental energy as well. So if you're an overthinker, which I am, and your mind's always going, thinking, thinking, a notebook, I always have my journal in my bag out on the go jot your thoughts down get them out of your head definitely have one by your bed if you're someone that you struggle to sleep you're waking up in the night you're struggling to fall asleep it's amazing to like get all of that out on paper and then go to sleep it's like a release isn't it like you've got it all out it's out of your head you now can sleep definitely have a notebook by your bed and in your bag for those nagging thoughts two sensory rest so sensory rest, we get tired from our senses of just everything going on. You're in the office, she's talking to a thousand people every day, all day. 
you're on the computer, your phone's going, you're on the phone, you're on TikTok, or you've got a notification on Snapchat, you've got meeting, the radio's on in the office, you're on a screen all day, that is sent to me, like there's just too much things going on. Sometimes we come home from work and we feel like we're absolutely depleted, but we just sent, like, we just need sensory rest because our senses are just blown. I am someone that works in a school non-stop all day i'm talking to people i'm at screens i'm dealing with different sounds different noises kids whining when i get home i am so tired but it's generally because my senses are just blown again how you get over that sensory rest very similar to mental just taking like 10 to 15 minutes to sit down but the most important thing with this one to me both of them but no devices no not even the radio that's another way as well like if you haven't got 10 to 15 minutes to actually sit down with nothing on the drive home have no radio i do that all the time and i find i especially do it after school and i didn't really realize why i was doing it usually like i might not get the whole way home but i definitely do about 15 minutes but it's because i just physically didn't want to hear anything so even if that becomes a part of like your routine where from work to home, nothing. No music, no, or I love listening to audiobooks, but it, it was just too much. Like, my brain needed a break, and even that helped so much to then feel like, okay, I'm just relieving myself. The other option is, like I said, taking 10 to 15 minutes and sitting there with no devices, like turning everything off, the radio off, the TV off, no phone, and just sitting in silence. You can close your eyes, you can keep your eyes open, whatever is for you and if you want to spice it up a bit i always talk about romanticizing your routine have a coffee make a coffee purposely and sit there with your coffee and say you are not going to turn on a device look at anything scroll at anything listen to anything while you wait for this coffee to cool down and drink it because that is about what five to seven minutes i feel like for me that's about 10 minutes because i cannot be drinking it piping hot and just have that time because what we often find is we're drinking our coffee, we're drinking our tea, we're on our phone, we're on the phone, we're watching something, we're listening to something, we're always multitasking. So I've been making a conscious effort in the morning to just like sit with my coffee and that's it. Like I'm not doing anything else but sitting with that coffee. That's a good way to like romanticize it and be doing something but also getting that rest in. at night time no devices have a switch off point they say an hour which i've been trying really hard to do i feel like i probably am at about half an hour but just generally no devices before bed like and again get into a routine so my little routine to help me come back this is a book because otherwise it's like okay well i want to watch tv okay i want to scroll on my phone okay i want to be on the phone so for me it's that time where i read so I do something I enjoy, my little hobby, it can be a self-help book, it can be something you enjoy, whatever you fancy. And then it's a really good way to quiet the mind, no devices, and relax into that thing. Especially if you're someone that struggles with sleeping, like you need to bang out a nighttime routine because that might be your answer to everything. Three, creative rest. And so this is where you're a creator like me, I create content, or you're an artist, a musician, whatever you create, actress, sing and dance and you just can't create you've just got a mental block you can't write the book you can't write the music whatever it is you just cannot think one of the ways to get creative resting is to get outside in nature and oh my god it works that's where i get most of my ideas just looking at nature feeling fresh i love the breeze i just feel like my mind just clears out and then i can just think about all of these things that just flow into my mind so for me my number one advice tip for this is get out in nature whether you're walking sitting on a bench go to your favorite place if you live by a beach that would be beautiful or you're just walking down your street whatever it is for you like i said romanticize it a place you enjoy is always going to be better but definitely get out in nature if you can't get out in nature or you feel like you're struggling day to day even though i definitely recommend daily walks change your space change it make your space more inspiring do you know what i mean upgrade that room put some nice piece of art in it are you by a window can you change your desk so you're looking out of the window rather than at a wall can you make it more open plan can you make it exciting can you make it inspiring can you have some things on the wall some quotes it's gonna stimulate your mind how can you create your workspace to be more inspiring and creative 
then inspire you to be more creative. For emotional and social rest, so these two are put together because they're very similar. So the way that we can get depleted of our emotional and social energy is by arguing people. You know, when like you're arguing with friends, families, work colleagues, like you're just stressed out, or you're in a social situation where you feel really uncomfortable, you're around people, you're not feeling it. Work can be a big one. Even friends that you no longer align with. This is how our emotional and social tanks can be depleted. We all go through this. I definitely go through this. But the one way to get over it is by learning to say no. Like learning to say that, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go to that place. I don't want to be with those people. I might work with that people, but I definitely can have my boundaries. I can do my work and what is acceptable in work and say, do you know what, that's out of my job role, or no, I don't have time for that actually, or I'll try my best, but I might not be able to get that done. So creating really firm boundaries with work colleagues and friends will really help you fill up that emotional and social tank. Because sometimes you just don't wanna go nowhere, sis. Like I am the person for that. A lot of times I find myself saying yes to places and things I actually really don't want to go. So I'm getting into a habit where I'm like, no, like I am socially and emotionally drained and I want to stay in the Saturday and I want to watch a movie and that's the plan. Being in my bed all day today is the plan and don't let no one tell you that, oh, you're boring. Da, da, da. My friend's favourite, you were granny, like how are you this age and you're in bed at eight? Because I need it. Like I have such a busy day. I wake up at 5am. I am depleted. I can't, I then don't want to meet you and go out for drinks and blah. I just cannot. Maybe on a weekend and even sometimes I need that day. But do not feel bad for saying no. Do not feel bad for setting your boundaries and having that time when you're recharging your battery because it's so important. Also, it's really important about who you have around you. So one way is isolating, taking some time out from people, spending some time alone, doing something you enjoy. But another really good way is the people you're around. Sometimes I'm so emotionally and socially drained because you're negative. Like we're together and now you're moaning about everything going on in your life. Like life's hard enough, my life's hard enough for me to then come out on a social event, wanna release, have fun, and then you're just moaning all night. So sometimes you need to look at your crowd and who you're actually around and swap them out for really positive, high energy people. And I've noticed it because I have certain friends who are totally high energy. And when I'm with them, I'm just on 10. I feel amazing. I go home feeling amazing. I go home feeling motivated. And then there's other people where I'm like, Ugh. I'm there and I'm, Ugh. I'm knackered. I leave and I'm like, Ugh. I've got no urge to want to see them again for a while, which is a big, like, that is a big red flag. Like, if you're feeling like that when you leave someone, like, oh, God, I'm crap, that's over. I ain't going to see her for another three weeks. That is a sign. So try and spot those people out. Five, spiritual rest. So this rest is just where you're just feeling like you're not feeling connected to your higher power, whoever you believe in, the universe, God. Do you know what I mean? You're, just, you're not feeling settled. You're not feeling at Peace. your energy is off, it's depleted, you're feeling depleted. The best way to combat this is to take some time out. For me, meditation is amazing. This is definitely what I do when I'm just feeling in that place. I'm feeling disconnected and I want to reconnect. For you, it might be praying, uh, like journaling, writing stuff down, however you know you connect spiritually. That is what you need to do when you're just feeling like at a disconnect, your energy's low, you're feeling disconnected from your source. Guys, get involved, comment below with what type of rest you feel like, girl, it's gone. I need to re-energize, I need to battery, I need to charge up. Which type of rest is it for you that you just feel like is completely gone? Guys, I hope you liked the video. Please like, comment and subscribe.